Hey, what's up, everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. All right, so I'm up fresh, doing uh, prep for laundry and all that good stuff, making breakfast. And I'm listening to Trevor Lane talk about the Hawks wanting Austin Reeves for DeJounte Murray and hoping um, that we will come up off of that uh, stance of keeping Austin Reeves. What, what everyone's going to have to understand, especially the Hawks, is that the Lakers are holding on to Austin Reeves not necessarily as a player, but as a contract. And because they're holding on to him as a valuable contract, letting him go for DeJounte Murray is lateral. Because we want DeJounte Murray because he's a valuable contract. Otherwise, we just hold on to D'Angelo Russell from we think it's just as good as a player in some ways. Different ways, but just as good, especially the way he's playing right now. We want the flexibility. We want the long-term, low yearly contract. So if I'm going to get up off of one of my, if not the best contract I have, just to bring in a good contract, then what have I actually done? It's a lateral move. So the Hawks, hopefully someone can send this video to them so they can have an understanding of what it is the Lakers are doing if they don't already. We don't care for DeJounte the player as much as we care for DeJounte the contract. We don't care for as much as Austin the player as much as we care for Austin the contract. So if you're sitting there with a stalemate in your mind saying, yeah, they're going to let go of Austin, you don't understand what it is the Lakers are actually trying to do. <laughs> you, don't, you don't understand what the objective is. And because of it, you're probably going to mess up your situation waiting on us to do something that doesn't make any sense for us to do if you understand us. We want Austin the contract. We want DeJounte the contract. If I'm giving up a flexible contract to get back a flexible contract, I haven't actually done anything at all based on what my objective is, which is to bring myself a collection of respectable and positive contracts. So that's what needs to be understood. We're trying to fix our books in a way that allows us to have players going forward on low year deals that fit what it is that ultimately we want for ourselves on the basketball floor. No one is coming off a Austin Reeves to get DeJounte Murray. I'm not going to do I'm not taking two steps forward, two steps back, and it's spinning in a circle and smiling at you. I'm not doing that. And that's exactly what the Hawks are asking us to do, or rather waiting for us to do. It's not going to happen. And if DeJounte Murray, the flexible contract, means as much to you, then obviously you're not going to be swapping it for Austin Reeves either. So let's, let's just help the Hawks here. You know what I'm saying? Help them. Get a full understanding of what it is that's actually happening. So if there's a move to be made, we can make it. And if it ain't a move to be made, people can move on. So that guys don't wait past the buzzer of the trade deadline. Waiting for something that was never, ever going to happen. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because what I'm getting a sense of right now is that the... It's not that the market is locked up like it was after the Rudy Gobert trade and the KD trade demand. But it is like a holding pattern... Uh, that could potentially leave us with the same dynamic as a stalemate. Once people start, and this is what my, I'm just speculating. I don't even heard anything. I don't know anybody. But once people get a whiff of the idea that LeBron James could be on the move, a lot of people are not going to move at all because if he moves, they want to have the pieces in place to be a part of that deal. If he's not going to be the deal maker of coming to their place they want to be the third team the fourth team and the fifth team so just as i read the market the way that my brain tends to do if i think something like that about to happen i'm going to tell everybody pause on everything we're going to do and let's incorporate ourselves into that deal or let's incorporate ourselves into the deal that trickles down from that deal being made the problem is the trade deadline is two days from now and if people are waiting for something that ain't going to happen <laughs> Because it doesn't look like LeBron's going to be moved unless he does. You know, you don't know until you do. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. This stalemate that I'm thinking is happening, or this this lock that this this quasi lock that I think is happening in the market, is a mistake. And people are about to let the trade deadline pass because they are simply not reading the room properly. Just like I'm saying, the Hawks may be doing if that is indeed what's happening here. All speculation. I don't know anybody. But when it comes down to it. If there's a move to make to improve your team and you need to improve your team, waiting on the big move with this little time left, 
I think could be risky for each and every franchise doing it. And because of it, I think some of y'all are going to fall into a space where you've made a mistake. You're going to let that deadline pass. You had deals you needed to make to improve your situation and you didn't do it. And it was because you were waiting on something didn't happen. And I just think that that's kind of what the league is doing right now. <laughs> and that's why I thought it was important for me to throw out this video and, and let people know what it is that I see there, especially when it comes to the Hawks and this Austin Reeves, DeJounte Murray trade. If you have to move DeJounte Murray for whatever set of reasons, sitting here waiting for us to give you Austin Reeves, in my humble opinion, speculative opinion, is nothing that's going to manifest in anything you need. Nothing at all. Because at the end of the day, if you know what the Lakers need, in this situation, you understand that they're not looking to make any lottery moves. It doesn't make any sense. DeJounte Murray's contract is great, but it ain't better than Austin Reeves. And we're not going to give you something better for something not as good. It's essentially what that is. Not judging the players, judging the contracts, for which the objective is to remain flexible post-LeBron's departure, for which I think, I think, could be imminent. He's going to opt out. And I know $51 million, people don't think he's going to get paid $51 million. I don't think a billionaire is worried about $51 million when it comes to the difference between playing with his son, of whom he's been telling us he wants to play with for years, and the circumstance last year with his son's health makes it even more of a double down on the idea that I think that that is imminent. So, he, you know, I was listening to Ticket TV. He made a very good point. It makes a lot of sense to me, especially if, if people follow me in the Laker organization. I don't think LeBron James does want to be traded to the Knicks even if he wants to play for the Knicks because he's going to want the Knicks to have those picks that they have in their war chest in place to make the moves that he wants to make <laughs> if the picks are in LA and he's in New York that's a problem for him so he ain't gonna want that that makes a lot of sense to me however as a Laker fan you know I got to worry about me just like you got to worry about him and so for me I'm still gonna try to trade him to the Knicks for those picks if I trade him at all and if I ain't trading him to the Knicks for picks, I'm trading him somewhere else for picks. Okay, see, Utah, wherever I can for picks if I'm going to trade him. If I've made the decisions that decision that he's going to uh, leave and I, I believe that he's going to leave, I don't necessarily need players back. I need picks. I can then trade those picks in the offseason for the players or keep those picks for my future if, if AD demands out and add his return to my LeBron picks war chest because that's really what it's all about for me flexibility to move forward with as much ammo as possible and i still think the lakers should want to do that but i don't believe that the nba is going to do that i don't believe nike is going to want the lakers to do that i don't you know what i mean it becomes a situation where you start having other problems is what i sense is going on there you move lebron james and you got seven other problems open up for fixing the one that's why i don't think it's going to happen because it ain't just LeBron moving. It's LeBron and his, everything that, that's attached to him moving. And you may need them in other areas. That's what I honestly think is going on. It's just bigger than basketball, but it's not bigger than business. And so when it comes to, to fixing our basketball club, the only thing I can hope would happen is that we'd have contingency plans upon LeBron's departure. But even if we do, it ain't going to be built for us to be champions. And that's what frustrates me about this entire setup. If what I'm looking at is actually tr the truth. Our concerns about having trouble with Nike and everybody else LeBron is attached to could keep us from actually being any good on the damn basketball floor. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Because my only interest as a fan is being good basketball-wise. I don't get a single coin out of these billions that they got floating around amongst each other. So that that's just the business of basketball right there. And it's just me speculating. I don't know anything. But I don't think the Lakers are going to save themselves. And I think they think of it as them covering up a, a, a gunshot wound and proceeding to pull out a gun and shoot themselves seven or nine more times. So probably not going to move Braun. And because I think that specula speculation probably holds merit, if the NBA market expects the Lakers to move Braun and are, as I said earlier in the video, holding out to try to be a part of that deal, I think that could be a big mistake. I think it could be a very big mistake. <laughs> or hoping to trickle down, <clears throat> have have a, have their their you know, returns come from the trickle down of that trade being made uh, uh, in regards to trades being made after that trade. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think so. So I think teams like Atlanta, if you got a deal for DeJounte Murray to make, make it. If you're waiting for Austin Reeves, he ain't coming. <laughs> you're not getting that contract. That's probably arguably second or third best contract in all of basketball. You ain't getting it, Atlanta. You're not, you're not getting that. So... Yeah, that's what I wanted to say, man. I think the market could open up 
if people start thinking like I'm thinking right now, they just make the move they want to make. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe something big happens after that and everybody shouldn't have listened to me. It's, this is no perfect science to this. But I'm telling you, what it seems to me is that people are waiting for price tax to come down from a big trade that probably is not happening. And because of it, you can see another trade deadline like we saw about 10 years ago where you only saw some role players from the Orlando Magic moved and like one role player from the Toronto Raptors moved and that was it for the whole trade deadline. <laughs> and to a point, to be completely honest with you, Another thing that makes me think something like that could be the case is because I don't think a whole lot of teams have a pressing need to make moves this year. Not like they did last year. There was a lot of teams, including the Lakers, who must complete their team. I don't think it's too many teams in that situation this year. I don't. And the teams with the most ammo, they're content. Okay, see, why do they need to make many moves? Utah, Markinen, but if you're not going to give me the price for Markinen, I can hold on to him for another year, no problem. Still got everything I need. Still good enough to win some games. You know, uh, New York, Juju just went down. Braun is flirting with him, and they can get him in the offseason for nothing. And like I said, now he's going to have an interest in holding those picks if he goes to New York. So if I'm New York, I'm probably not making any moves involving any picks. And if I'm all these teams, I'm probably not making any moves with New York unless they're giving up picks. So they don't have to move. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like the teams that you want to see make a move who have the most to give – don't have the most incentive to move. It's the teams that don't that ultimately find themselves in situations that otherwise put them in a position to, uh, you know, be holding out, waiting for something big to happen so that they can jump in, in line and do it. And so for me, looking at that from where I'm sitting, is uh, it's like a, a couple of teams are making mistakes, letting that be what they do. So... That's what I wanted to say, man. That's exactly what I want to say. I'm going to continue doing my workout, continue getting this laundry together. Um, I would love to see big trades, but I'd also like to see trades that make sense. Not people just tossing stuff around at bad prices or people just doing stuff they don't need to do just to keep us happy and entertained. No, I'd rather the trade line deadline be locked up than the Lakers give up Austin Reeves for something I don't want. You know what I mean? Or, or bringing back pieces that, that don't necessarily uh, help us flexibly uh, going forward. So... You know, that's that's where I'm at, man. That's where I'm at. I I, I hope the Lakers are, uh, as a Laker fan, I hope we're able to, to get what we want done. You know what I mean? I hope we don't have to capitulate to stuff like what Atlanta's doing. Because Atlanta's not. You know, I don't think they're looking at this in the most, if, if the reports are reflecting their actual thoughts, I don't think they're looking at it the right way. I just don't. You know, they're looking at it the right way. I think they think the Lakers are about to do something stupid. The Lakers have a very specific goal. That's it. It's a very specific goal. Bring me DeJounte's contract that's slapped next to Austin's contract. That is the goal. If I'm going to be swapping one for the other, then the goal is, is not reached. So if you think it's about basketball or if you think it's about, you know, you're just sitting there saying, we want Austin for some stupid ding bad reason, you're not, you're not, you're not even understanding what the hell we're doing. So that's pretty much what I got to say, man. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching. I'm out.